Hello, my name is Michael Grandy. I'm a professor at Providence College, I'm currently teaching uh, MBA 603, which is um, accounting decisions and uh, managerial accounting, um, again, 603. And uh, today's um, um, video is essentially going to be some problem solutions from chapter four, uh, process costing. And there's two main things that we're going to deal with. The first thing we're going to take a look at is how the costs move through the accounting system, which is very similar to, but a little different from job order costing. Um, with regard to process costing, we are going to watch the costs flow from one department to the next department until it's completed. When it is completed, it then moves to finished goods. When it's sold, it goes to the cost of goods sold. So there are some sim similarities, but there are also some differences. The second group of problems that we're going to focus on is the process costing system. And there's basically four steps associated with that system. Step number one is to compute equivalent units of production. The second step is to compute the cost per equivalent unit. The third step is where we assign costs to the units. And the fourth step is where we prepare a cost reconciliation report. So we're going to work with some problems from uh, chapter four. This is the uh, Garrison Noreen 17th edition. And the first problem we're going to take a look at is exercise 4-1. And although I will put the solutions uh, up on the screen and share the solutions with you, um, I assume that you have your textbook in front of you. So the first exercise we're going to look at is exercise 4-1. And what I'd like to do is read it and then go through the item. So, um, it begins by saying quality brick company produces bricks in two processing departments. Okay. Again, we're watching the cost go from one department to the next two processing departments, molding and firing information relating to the company's operations in March follow. So we're going to be looking at items a through F and all they require us to do is to prepare journal entries, to record A through F. So let me take a moment here and I will share my screen with you as we um, walk through these um, problems here. So these are the publisher's solutions, which I thought just as they look better than my handwriting. But the first item says raw materials used in production molding 23,000 and firing for 8,000. So what's important to see here is that we have two separate accounts for work in process. One work in process account for molding and one work in process for firing department. So this is where we are allocating the cost of materials to each department. We have the debits because where it's increased and the credit it's coming out of raw materials. Item B, direct labor costs incurred, molding 12,000, firing 7,000. So again, item B, you can see where we're specifically putting the costs into work in process for molding and work in process for firing. And our credit is to salaries and wages payable or cash. Item C, manufacturing overhead was applied, molding department 25,000, firing department 37,000. So again, as you recall from previous chapters, this is where we're taking, we're transferring funds from the manufacturing overhead account into the work and process account. But again, breaking it down between the two departments, molding and firing. Item D, unfired, molded bricks were transferred from molding department to the firing department. So it moves from one department to the next. According to the company's process costing system, the cost of the unfired molded bricks was 57,000. 
So you can see this is simply a transfer from one department to the other. It's an increase in the firing department and a decrease in the molding department. Item E, finished bricks, okay, completed bricks, were transferred from the firing department to finished goods. According to the company's process costing system, the cost of the completed finished bricks was 103,000. So you can see here, they increased the finished goods inventory, decreased work in process firing department. And then lastly, Finished bricks were sold to customers according to the company's process costing system. The cost of the finished bricks that were sold were $101,000. So you can clearly see there are similarities, but there are some differences between the journal entries that we looked at in job order costing and the ones that we see in process costing. Let's move to the next exercise, and that's going to be exercise 4.3. So let's read it and then we'll tackle it together. Superior Micro Products uses the weighted average method in its process costing system. Data for the assembly department for May appear as follows. So you've got materials and labor, okay, and overhead. Work in process as of May 1, broken down by materials, labor, and overhead costs added during May, and they give you the equivalent units of production. All they're asking you to do is compute the cost per equivalent unit for materials, labor, and overhead. Again, a very straightforward problem, okay? But bringing out the basic concepts. So it's important to know that you have to start with the costs that you began the month with, Add the costs that were added during the period. You have your total cost divided by the equivalent units that they've already calculated for you. And you have the cost per equivalent unit, the materials, labor, and overhead. Add the three together. You clearly see the total cost per equivalent unit, $22.94. Very straightforward, but it just gets you used to the discipline of beginning work and process, dollars plus the dollars that were added during the current period for total dollars. Let's also look at exercise 4-4. It goes on to say here, data concerning the recent period's activity in the prep department, the first processing department in a company that uses process costing appear below. So they're giving the equivalent units in ending work and process inventory, the materials in conversion. So remember, conversion costs include both labor and overhead, and they give you the cost per equivalent unit. Goes on to say, a total of 20,100 units were completed and transferred to the next processing department. So they've given you the ending work in process. They've given you the number, they've given you the um, uh, equivalent units in ending work and process, and they've told you the number of units that were transferred out, and they've also given you the cost per equivalent unit. So they're asking you to do two things. Number one, compute the cost of ending work and process inventory for materials and labor, materials and conversion in and total, and compute the cost of units completed and transferred out. Again, short little problem, but working on the basic concept here. So the, the ending inventory, you've got 2,000 equivalent units for materials, 800 equivalent units for conversion. They've given you the cost per equivalent unit, simple multiplication. That is essentially the cost of ending work and process inventory, total of 31,000. Then they tell you, ask you to calculate the cost of units that were completed and transferred out. They gave you the 20,100 units. They gave you the cost per equivalent unit. Again, some simple multiplication. And you can come up with the total cost of units transferred out. Let's look at exercise 4-5. Maria 
Am Corporation uses the weighted average method in its process costing system. The baking department is one of the processing departments in its strudel manufacturing company. In June, in the baking department, the cost of the beginning work in process inventory was $35.70. The cost of the ending work in process inventory was $28.60. And the cost added to production was $43.120. Prepare the cost reconciliation for the baking department. So what's important here is that you need to account for all the costs. The cost of the beginning work and process inventory plus the costs added must then equal the cost assigned to the ending work and process inventory plus the cost of the units completed and transferred. So this two, they gave you a bunch of information here. They gave you the cost of beginning work in process inventory at 3570. They told you they added $43,120 of cost during the period for a total cost to be accounted for 46,690. They then gave you the cost of the ending work in process inventory at 2860. And at that point in time, you can very quickly determine the cost of units completed. You could take the 46,690 of total cost to be accounted for, less the cost of the ending inventory to arrive at the 43,830. That's the simple way to get there because you need to arrive at 46,690. The publisher has also provided you with another way to get there, which is essentially what we talked about. The beginning inventory plus the cost added less the cost of the ending inventory, you get to the 43,830. Very straightforward, very simple. So I essentially assigned those four problems just to get you used to the basic mechanism. So what I want to do now is take a look at a more robust problem. And I certainly apologize for this being like this. Is there a way to convert it. Let me put, stop sharing for a minute. Let me pause. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, another problem here. This is going to be problem 4-13. And um, let me, let me begin to read it. It's a, it's a pretty lengthy problem, but it brings us through all the steps where we're going to have to, number one, compute equivalent units of production. Number two, compute the cost per equivalent unit. Number three, assign cost to the units, both ending inventory and um, cost of you know, units transferred out. And then number four, prepare the cost reconciliation. So Old Country Links produces sausages in three production departments, mixing, casing, and curing. I'm sorry, mixing, casing, and curing and packaging. And the mixing department meats are prepared and ground and then mixed with spices. The spiced meat mixture is then transferred to the casing and curing department, where the mixture is force fed into casings and then hung and cured in climate controlled smoking chambers. In the packaging department, the cured sausages are sorted, packed and labeled. The company uses the weighted average method in its process costing system data for September for the casing and curing department follow. So we have what, the, the middle department, right? Casing and curing. And then they provide us with the work in process inventory at September 1. And they also provide us work in process inventory at September 30. So they give you the beginning work in process inventory and they give you the ending work in process inventory. And they tell us the percentage completed with regard to mixing, materials, and conversion, okay? They go on to give us the work in process inventory at September 1 in terms of dollars, and they give us the cost added during September. So the very first part, they tell us the percentage of completions for the 
um, beginning inventory and the ending inventory. And then the second box, they give us the dollar amounts that are associated with the beginning inventory and the cost added during the period. It goes on to say mixing costs represents the cost of spiced meat mixture transferred in from the mixing department. The spiced meat mixture is processed in the case and curing department in batches. Each unit in the above table is a batch and one batch of spiced meat mixture produces a set amount of sausages that are passed on to the packaging department. During September, 50 batches were completed and transferred to the packaging department. So they're asking you to do the five steps here, okay? Which is four steps, okay? Determine the case, casing and curing department's equivalent units of production for mixing. So let me share my screen with you. We can take a look at that. So here, you should see here now the computation of equivalent units of production. So remember, they said there were 50 units. Units transferred to the next department, 50. And there's what? One batch in ending inventory. And that's what they gave us in that box. They said there was the beginning inventory is one unit. The ending inventory is one unit, which is one batch. So the units that were complete, transferred to the next department, those are assumed completed with all respects as it was transferred out. So 50, 50, and 50. Goes on to say, there were, there were the equivalent units. There was one item in ending inventory, and it specifically said that for materials, that one unit in ending inventory was 80% was complete with regard to ending inventory. And with regard to conversion costs, which include both labor and manufacturing overhead, it was 70% complete. So you take that one unit, multiply it times 80%, got 0.8. With regard to conversion, that one unit times 0.7 is 0.7. So you now you have your equivalent units. Step number two, compute the casing and curing department's cost per equivalent unit for mixing materials and conversion for the month of September. So again, they provided you in that second box, the cost, right? The cost that came in for mixing 1670, materials 90, conversion 605. So those are the, the costs. Costs added during the period, we've got total of 81,460 for mixing, materials, 6006 in conversion 42490 so those are the total costs so now we should take the total cost divided by the equivalent units of production you get the cost per unit it's that simple number 3 and number 4 are are combined with each other and this is where i call it we're going to assign cost to the units So we have the cost, we know the equivalent units in ending inventory was one for mixing, 0.8 for materials, 0.7 for conversion. Cost per equivalent unit, we just carried it down from before, simple multiplication, right? So those are the costs that are in the ending inventory. What about the costs that were transferred out? Okay. It was 50 units transferred out. It's 50 for all of them. Multiply times the cost per equivalent unit you just calculated. Those are the cost of units transferred out. Now, some of this got cut off, and I do apologize for that. But if you look at the totals, those are the only two things we're interested in. The total cost, which is for ending inventory, 1630. 96 and 595 is a total of $2,321. The cost, the total cost of the units completed and transferred out is going to be the 81.5 from mixing, 6,000 for materials, 
42.50 for conversion for a total of exactly $130,000. So that's a total of 132,321. We've assigned cost to units. And then number five, ask you to prepare a cost reconciliation report. And that's essentially a cost to be accounted for, right? They provided you with, this is the cost of the uh, beginning work in process that came in, 2365. Here are the costs that were added during the period. Again, so you know where those numbers come from. It comes from that second box, work in process, beginning inventory, the 1670 plus the 90 plus the 605. The costs that were added during the period, again, from that same chart. So you've got $132,321 to account for. And you just allocated those costs up here between the ending work in process, the 1630, the 96, and the 595, which equaled the 2321. And then the cost associated with the units transferred out, which was the 815, the 6,000, and the 42,500, which was $130,000 these two numbers equal each other as they are supposed to. So you therefore accounted for all of those costs. So that is essentially, you know, process costing. We'll look at an in-class problem that's very similar, uh, just as robust. And uh, thank you for your time.